So we now want to explore some important properties of line integrals, specifically on closed curves. So you want to recall that clo a closed curve implies that the initial and terminal points of our curve are the same. So in other words, it starts and ends at the same point. So dis to distinguish between line integrals on open curves and closed curves, we need to adopt a new notation for closed curves. So. A new notation for our closed curves is defined as follows. We have the integral over C of the vector field F dotted with a differential d vector R, and the new part of our notation here is a circle on the integral. So this circle here, I can make it a brighter color, this circle here implies that the curve is closed. So, thinking back to our fundamental theorem of calculus, if we let A be any point on our closed curve C, or a curve C, then if we assume that our vector field is conservative, then by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we can make the following conclusion. So we have, we have the integral over a closed curve C of this vector field dotted with the differential d vector r, then this is going to be equal to the potential function evaluated at A minus the potential function evaluated at A is equal to, you guessed it, zero. So this is our first important property, and this is telling us that the line integral of a conservative vector field is zero. So a similar argument can be made in the opposing direction. So we want to keep in mind here that we've just seen that the line integral of a conservative vector field over a closed curve is zero. So using this, if we let A and B be two distinct endpoints such that we have C sub 1 is any curve from point A to point B, And we also let C sub 2 be any curve from point B to point A. Then we can establish a orientation for a full curve C here, defined by pieces C sub 1 and C sub 2. So let's let our curve C be a closed curve consisting of C sub 1, followed by c sub 2. So let's think about this graphically real quick. Let's say here is our point A, and over here is point B, and we are saying that we have c sub 1 is from point A to point B. So we're establishing that orientation, and then we have that c sub 2 is the curve from point B to point A. And we can make a little love note here to ourselves that C is the union of these two curves. So we have that the full curve C is C sub 1 united with C sub 2. So using this in our fundamental theorem, we can establish the following properties. So we have that the integral over the closed curve C of our conservative vector field dotted with a differential d vector r is equal to the integral over c sub 1 of that conservative vector field dotted with the differential d vector r plus the curve or the integral over c sub 2 of the vector field, the conservative vector field, dotted with the, d, the differential d vector r. And since c is closed, this is still equal to 0. So this is our first important property here. And using this property, we can then define new notations for our different curves C sub 1, or the different pieces of our curve C sub 1 and C sub 2. So this further allows us to conclude that the integral over the curve C sub 1 of this vector field F, conservative vector field F dotted with the differential d vector r, is equal to minus the integral over the curve C sub 2 of this conservative vector field F dotted with a differential d vector r. And a new notation I want you to be mindful of is the integral over minus 
c sub 2. So we've moved that negative to the curve on our integral. And so what this is saying is that c sub 2 is traversed in the opposite direction. Let's give ourselves a little more room. So this is in our second important property in new notation. And again, what this is telling us is that c or minus c sub 2 is the curve c sub 2, but it's traversed in the opposite direction.